Hi guys, it's your girl Kill Chemist, and I am coming to you finally to do this 20 question lock tag. Um, everyone's been doing it. I was tagged a long time ago by my girl Leslie Monique TV, and more recently I was asked to do this tag by Back to Nap 1120. So I am finally getting around to it. I'm awful at doing tags. I get excited when people tag me, and then if I don't do it right then and there, it's gonna be a while. So don't take it personally, okay? Um, I started my locks um, June 15, 2008, and prior to that, um, I had done all the same research most newbies do. You know, what's the best methods for the length of hair that I have? Um, how many should I have to get a certain thickness? How thick should the parts be? I asked people how many did they have? All the same stuff that all newbies ask. Um, and after reading all kind of information and my head being full of all kinds of thoughts and finally having someone tell me you know your hair is different than my hair and you know your locks are going to turn out how they're supposed to turn out then you know you could do everything that I did and your locks still may not look exactly like mine I finally decided I really wanted to lock my hair so I went in the bathroom that morning and installed my locks it took me like a half a day because I was careful trying to be careful with the parting um, and yeah I installed them that day. I started with two strand twist on about um, seven, eight inches of natural, loose natural hair. How old they are, about 33 months, I guess now. Yeah, because this is March and I will be three years, June 15, 2008. So 33 months of locked hair so really excited about that you guys um i will say that um the longest ones i recently measured because i knew i had to do this now this is including the like almost two inches of new growth i have at the root stretched out so the longest one was probably like nine and a half almost ten inches and the shortest is about Mm, almost seven inches so that should give you some idea none of them are absolutely um, perfect or the same size same shape um, you know I have all the you know they are they have some imperfections they're not perfect but I love them all um, as many of you know who watched my um, dirty little secret video you probably know that I did calm out the last row the ends of the last row because I had discovered quite a bit of buildup in those so right now those are kind of weird because they are like baby locks all over again and they're curling up at the roots you see that one curling up at the ends and stuff so they will have to you know relock but other than that I wouldn't say I think they have any strange or unique or different they're all unique and different um, and awesome I currently have 102 locks. That's the same amount that I started out with, and I hope to continue to have 102 locks. I don't foresee any combining or any falling out uh, in the future, so yeah. I use a lot of different things, but I will say my staple must-have in the house product is African black soap that I put in a bottle with water and liquefy it. Um, if I don't have any other shampoos that I'm interested in using, I have to have that. That is like my staple. I will even add other things to that. Um, other thing I must have are oils for my hair, different kind of carrier oils, sweet almond oil, jojoba oil. I have the African's best, Africa's best herbal oil and other various oil blends. I have to have oil and I have to have my African black soap. It is a must. I pretty much wash them whenever I want to. Um, when I first started out, I'd say up until like the first eight months before I started interlocking my hair, um, I would do the every, roughly every two weeks. Sometimes I would go four weeks um, retwist and wash situation. But after I started interlocking and I realized I could just get up under that sprayer whenever I want to, um, then that's what I started doing. Um, so when I say whenever I want to, it doesn't always have to be with actual shampoo. Sometimes I just want to rinse them 
and I can rinse them every day in the shower if I want to. Um, but also, you know, I shampoo them whenever I feel the need. Um, I don't like to be able to smell my hair not smelling pleasant. So, yeah. Also, um, now that my locks are older, I will, you know, I have not interlocked my hair in months, but I still will wet them whenever I feel like it. I don't stress out about, you know, the puffy new growth at the roots and all that now that they're older. I just don't. I interlock now for the most part. Um, what I will retwist in between, I started interlocking around month 8th, as I stated, and... Um, but occasionally I will retwist in between interlocking sessions if I really need to do a style. I last interlocked my hair on December 27th and I have not interlocked or twisted it since. I did do a braid out style um, last month and when I did that I kind of twisted down and neatened up the roots then but I wouldn't say it was a retwist it was just to braid my locks. And of course recently if you saw the lock TWA video I did where I did the lock coil style of course with the coiling down of the locks that definitely tightened up on the roots but I've since washed it and all I did was put it in a couple of ponytails after I washed it and that kind of helped to stretch out the roots a little bit and as you can see um, no maintenance and they hang nicely and I love it so I'm actually not planning to do any interlocking until my three-year anniversary June 15th so I guess you can say I'm semi free-forming until then I have things that I put I don't regularly wear things in my locks I know some people do but what I do occasionally is I'll decide I want to make some lock jewelry I'll get inspired to make lock jewelry and I will wear that for however long I'm in love with it and then I take it out um, I have those little metal beads that I think if any of you are familiar with Leslie Monique TV or Royal Eleven Two, they wear those metal like beads they or used to wear them in their hair I I have some of those I have them in gold and in silver so occasionally I'll just be feeling some kind of way and put those in I have shells um, I have if for those of you who saw me um, one video I had I can't remember which one it was where I had the beads on one lock um, I got that from watching naps for you she wears that quite often but again I don't wear anything regularly most of the time I just like my hair to just chill but I do have things that I can put in when I'm feeling in the mood Oh, this is a good question about the model. What model would my locks have? Um, I think my model for my locks would be welcome to who you've always been. Because when I started, when I went natural, that was one level of really embracing who I was. But then when I locked my hair, it just seemed like my hair was ready to lock. It just, I mean, after I washed my hair after the first two weeks, it didn't unravel. And I just feel like this is where my hair needed to be, you know. And this is, this has really brought me out more, um, having less stress about my hair and fussing with my hair, my loose hair. It's allowed me to really discover other creative aspects of who I am. So, yeah. Welcome to who you, you know, you always uh, were supposed to be or something to that level would be my motto for my locks. Like, welcome to, you know, who you've always been or who you always should have been or who you were always meant to be. Um, because that's how I feel about my hair. Um, I think they just fit me, they suit me, and they are like a true extension of me. And this is like, I feel like just the style I should have always had almost, you know. I think many people are probably going to think I've lost my mind or I'm crazy or insane for those of you who started that way. But I would actually want to start with like a TWA. I would like wish, sometimes I wish I had cut my hair all the way back down. The reason I say that is not because my hair wasn't healthy or anything, but it was the hair that I had had on my head for five and a half years um, of twisting and manipulating. I even um, dyed it at one point. I just did a lot of things to my hair and I sometimes feel like when my hair was at its you know new baby TWA phase it was just like the like the best I guess condition you know because I hadn't done a lot to it it hadn't been exposed to the environment and products and all that stuff 
So I would I would really, if I ever started locks, I would actually probably be one of those people who I might would pick them out just to see what my hair looked like. But if I locked again, I probably would cut my hair all the way back down and start. Um, and I say that too because I've seen people going through the baby phase and I know most people are like, I hate this phase. But some people have like the cutest little like, like sometimes the stuff that annoys you guys is the thing that I think is cute. Like the people whose hair won't lay down for anything and it's just like all over their head. I would love... Like, my hair never went through that phase. It was, you know, already at a length where it was laying down. I would love to have the spiky lock phase. Um, just other various things. So I would definitely do that differently. And as a result of that, I probably would start with coils instead of twists because my hair would be shorter. And what else? I think I would do less in the beginning. I would manipulate a lot less um, and just let it be. I wouldn't do the whole, I have to do this every two week maintenance craze. And I wouldn't try to figure out little concoctions to spray on it to see if it'll make it lock faster. I think I would just be in a, like where I am now, I feel like I'm in a much more chill phase of locking. I think I would, if I had another set, I would start off in that chill phase of locking. So yeah, that's what I would do differently. Hello, other than dreadlocks. <laughs> Look at me. I'm like one of the most unique people I've ever seen. Look at me. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Unique baby. Yes. One. He only made one. Mm -hmm. But no, nah, I would say like piercings and stuff. I don't have any body piercings or tattoos. I don't knock anybody who does. I don't have them. Only piercings I do have. I have piercings in my ears. I don't wear my earrings in them as I should. I have these holes were actually put in my ears when I was like three months old my first set by my aunt who's passed on so this is kind of special to me um she pierced my ears along with my cousin we're both we're a day apart and she pierced our ears and I even have little pictures with the little straw sticking through them so she did these with a needle then on my 13th birthday I got my second hole in my both my ears then one year uh, a few years after that <laughs> This is a funny one. The third one that I have in this ear, you can hardly, hardly see it. But I have a third one right at the very end. And my ears aren't very big, so it's kind of hanging off. But it's it's secure. But I got this one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember how old my dad was. He was somewhere in his maybe 40s. He decided he wanted to get his ear pierced. So we're in the mall, and he tells me he wants an earring. And I'm like, what? Did you tell Ma you want this earring? So I'm messing with him. So we go into the shop. And the lady basically tells him it's like, I think $20 to get one ear pierced, but like $22 for a set. And of course, my dad does not want two earrings. You know, he's still old school. He's trying to be cool, but he's still old school. So he's like, I only want one. So I was like, well, you know, that's ridiculous to have to pay that much just for one. But, you know, for two, it's only so much, you know, a little extra. I was like, I'll get the other one. You get one and I'll get one. So I have this one because my dad wanted um yeah, wanted an earring. So that's how I got the third one in this ear. And then the two top cartilage ones that I, like I said, I hardly ever wear earrings. I need to start back wearing my earrings in, especially in the summer. I mostly wear it in the summer than I do in the winter. Those two that I got, um, actually at the, my, my best friend at the time were no longer cool like that. But, um, we decided we wanted the cartilage earring and I think she only got one, but again, it was that situation. If you get one, you're paying, you might as well end up getting two. So I got two. Actually, I think she got one down here and one up here. So she got her two that way. And I ended up just getting both in the cartilage of my ear. So those are probably the unique piercings that I have. Um, but I don't think that's very unique. Most people have that. Um, so I have a total of seven ear piercings. Um, two in one ear and five in the other one. So that might be a little different. People that I know, actually, physically know, I was trying to make a list the other day. I would say maybe 10 people, including like family members and friends. And if I can add in, you know, my recent YouTube buddies that I connected with in real life, that counts to me. I'd say at least 10. But if I really sat down and thought, I probably know more people because I went to college with a lot of people who have locks and stuff. So I just can't think right now. The question about the employers um, turning me down, 
I have never, to my knowledge, experienced any type of discrimination because of my natural hair. And I have been natural now for, let's see, three, almost eight and a half, nine years now. Um, and I've worked in um, pharmaceutical industry, in the office setting, um, in a laboratory setting, then into an office setting, and have been in an office setting. Let's see, I've been working... Um, the majority of my work career, I've been working now with like 11 and a half years out of college, and I've never experienced any type of discrimination. I've gone, this is my fourth job, fourth company I've been with. I've never experienced any issues. I, you know, I think some people like, oh, certain hairstyles carry a certain, um, I guess, connotation, or people get a certain, have a certain stereotype. I still think you can overcome anyone's stereotype of your physical appearance by being intelligent, presenting yourself well, being neat, um, coming to the interview dressed appropriately. And, you know, it's it's how you present the overall package that I think um, impacts whether or not you get a job or keep a job or whatever. I've never had anybody... Um, come at me like that about my hair sometimes people tend to think oh people look at me funny because I have locks and they wouldn't approach me because of my hair no I think it's I'm just gonna put it out there and you can take it how you want to I think it's how you, your overall what you put out your your energy your your aura your personality your 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 body language I think all of that adds to it um, I like I said, I've never had anybody not speak to me intelligently or treat me a certain way. Now I have had people make some kind of little crazy comments. Don't get me wrong about you know when they just see me and I'm not they're not talking to me or anything. Somebody might approach me some kind of way, but for the most part, when I open my mouth and I speak and they hear what I have to say and I can speak intelligently and carry a conversation with people. This, all of this, all of this, even this, I think, fades away. So that's just my thoughts on that. Take it how you will. Feel free to comment. Oh, the weirdest and dumbest questions. I'm just going to tell you to check out my Lock Peeve video or check out the um, collabo video that Dante86 put together in which I talk about my Lock Peeve and some of the crazy things that people have said to me. Um about my hair, things that annoy me, lock peeves, that's probably the most effective way to answer dumb, funny, weird questions. And it's probably anything that you've ever been asked that you feel is dumb, crazy, or weird, I've probably been asked it too. So far, no accidents, no freak accidents, no drama. Um, Role models, dreaded role models. Um, I would say when my hair was shorter, my cousin has locks and her locks, she was actually in the process of growing them all the way down her back. So I was really looking up to her, I guess, in a, in a sense because of that. Um, but I don't know that I necessarily have role models based on their hair. Um, I, if anything, if I'm going to look up to somebody, it's going to be about more than a physical um, attribute. Um, I admire anyone, I would say, to some extent, who has the courage to go natural, embrace their natural hair, and wear it proudly. And I also have a level of respect for people who lock their hair because I know the process and I understand what it takes and what you go through. So when I see someone with a you know, long head of, of, of locks, um, then yeah, there's a, some level of respect, but do I look up to them or make them my role model? No. Um, I've learned, I will say this, I have learned a lot from a lot of the people here on YouTube. Um, again, it's a respect thing. I'm not going to say you're my role model, and I, I don't think I should be anybody's role model. Um, I'm someone you can look to for advice, and you know, you can admire the fact that I've either gotten to a point where you want to go or that kind of thing. But, you know, if you want me to be your role model, I hope it's for something else that I've done, maybe. So, as many of you know, I'll go ahead and touch on this. This video is going to be too long. As many of you know, I um, recently went down to New York. Initially, that trip was just to hang out with my girl Summer Baby. Hey! And we had a blast. We had, you know, we met 
she met me at Grand Central Station and from like the moment we like said hey how you doing it's just like we had known each other our whole lives we hung out we laughed and chatted and cut up the whole weekend there was no drama no tension no awkward silences none of that we had a blast the whole weekend the whole weekend and then um, I was actually also fortunate enough to meet up um, she had plans to meet up with um, Yana Boo now Hana Yana or Osaka Yana um, and um, Cheska Lee Cheska Locks so I didn't know initially that I was going to get to meet them but I was very happy to meet um, both of those young ladies I will say this for um, all of you who have any impression of them you know I know sometimes we come on here and we make these videos and you often wonder is that what they're really like I can definitely vouch that if you think they are cool they are fun they are creative they are intelligent they are beautiful um, black women uh, if that is your impression of them, if you thought, wow, they would be cool to hang out with, I wish I could meet them kind of people, then I would say you are, boom, right on, right on the money, dead on the nose, um, because that's the type of people they are. What you saw in that video that if you watch Summer Baby's video of us chilling and hanging out, what you saw was genuine. It wasn't staged. It wasn't like, oh, quick, let's make this video kind of thing. She whipped out the camera. We were already cutting up laughing and talking. So hello to all you ladies. Yes, I had a blast. I think I expressed that multiple times, but again, I had a wonderful time. So I could definitely see myself hanging out with them again. And there's tons of you guys here on YouTube that I would love to hang out with. We, you know, particularly those of us who inbox each other, all my buddies on Twitter, um, only people I can say I wouldn't right now see myself hanging out with is the people who don't have any videos and pictures up. Even if you comment a lot, just because, you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know what you look like. I don't know who you are. You could be anything. And I know sometimes people who post pictures could be anything too, but I feel a little better. But if we have connected and had any back and forth conversation, um, you know, we are here, then I can see myself hanging. I'm not going to make a long list of people, but there are people I would love. And you guys are everywhere all over the world. And anytime that I think I'm going to be in any area, I will definitely try to reach out to some people to hang out. So, yeah. I don't think there's anybody left to tag. <laughs> But if you have not done this and you want to, I'm going to put the questions specifically down low. You can check it out. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you, Leslie Monique TV, for tagging me. And uh, shout out to Back to Nap 1120, I think, who also was very adamant that she wanted me to do this tag. All right, guys. See ya.